Making regalia is made possible in part by Bernina of Oklahoma City, sellers of high quality, precision sewing machines, and by Hamilton Beach, makers of quality home and commercial appliances, and by generous contributions from viewers like you. Welcome back to Making Regalia with me, Joaquin Lone Lodge, here in Concho, Oklahoma. Uh, today we've got a great show for you today. Uh, we're going to be finishing up our ribbon shirt that we uh, started on last uh, week. Uh, we don't actually have wi uh, Red Sky with us today, but I'm still going to finish up what, what we need to do. Uh, we're going to do uh, the cuffs to the shirt and the collar. So I'm going to go through the detail work on how to do that. And today we actually have a special guest all the way from the Potato State. Um, Miss Willow Abrahamson. She is Shoshone Bannock and she is also a competition dancer as far as the women's jingle dress. She has traveled across the nation all the way up into Canada and across all the other states too. And the cool part about it is she actually does her own regalia. So today, um, while we do the shirt, she's actually going to do all my sewing for me. So hopefully we're going to have a uh, pretty good collaboration. Um, Willow, uh, how long have you actually been sewing, uh, doing your regalia work? Um, I actually don't sew. I just told you that so I could get on the show. Right, but right. You know. A lot of people do that these <laughs> days. I just don't know. <laughs> no, I've been sewing for 10 years, so. 10 Not years. very long. So what, uh, who actually started you getting uh, in the sewing and stuff? Um, my late husband, actually, he taught me how to sew. Um, he was a men's fancy dancer, and he used to help me make my jingle dresses. And so that style that he showed me is what I use, so. That's cool. Yeah. So now you do all your jingles from like head to toe and pretty much how many dresses do you crank out a year, do you say? A year? I haven't made a dress. Well, okay, I made two of them last year, but I didn't make them for me. I made them for my aunt and one of my cousins. So <laughs> like, what we're going to do is we're going to, she's actually going to sew the cuffs for me today. Um, hopefully her skill level is up to par. Hopefully she doesn't mess up. If not, I'm going to have to do the whole thing over again. But, you know, we'll see how it goes. So, going on, uh, the materials that I use, you can get at most material stores. Uh, the interfacing is just kind of a cotton-based material. And what I did is I heat bonded that and then um, heat bonded the material so it uh, perfectly fits around like uh, the interfacing. So, if you will, can you hand me Grab one? Grab the interfacing? Yes. Uh, this is also the interfacing that some people make earrings and stuff out of isn't it very true and hey. also beadwork too so that's all different like formats for this stuff yeah. uh there should be another piece over there too okay i'm just gonna grab the whole shebang okay right which on. one right on all of them that works for me Can now I've already cheated, you know, like last night when I was staying up really late, uh, I already did all my um, design work and my measurements, but I'm going to go through it with you r uh, real quick. Um, kind of see how I kind of got a line here. Um, I'm going to show and um, kind of tell how, like, how I got all this stuff. So uh, the cuffs, what I did measure um, is about four inches. It's kind of a big, thick cuff, but you know, for Red Sky, you know, he was a kind of a big guy. I kind of want to make a really big cuff. So the, the width right here is four inches. And I believe I measured 10 inches from here. Now, usually with my shirts, it'll be kind of a puffy sleeve that comes down. And if you see kind of on, on the shirt, I actually interlaid like the material in and kind of bunched it up. But that way, you know, the shirt all comes perfectly together and kind of fits into the cuff. So what I did on this first piece of material is I, I actually measured nine inches I know I, my cuff is four inches, but for each side I did four and four, and I have a, like an inch in the middle to play around with. And it's a cool trick that I kind of picked up when I was doing this, that you know you can make both cuffs in one just by using this uh, little trick. So the diameter of the little uh, rectangle I got is like nine inches and 10 here. And from there I got my rectangle. From there, you know, all I did is just heat bond this on the back. And here in a minute, I'm gonna heat bond the front so we'll actually have a heat bond on both sides. From there, I'm gonna attach the material and then we're gonna um, actually sew it on there and kind of make a sandwich out of it. So it's pretty simple. Very nice. So I already got my, heat, my iron fired up. And since I've already done it, you know, I'm gonna use this other material, kind of show you how the steps on actually how to create it the cuff. This is another cotton-based material. It looks like it's from Wally World. Wally World. Yeah, the place to get and in heaven. The place to get all the best outfit material. Oh yeah. 
So now we're going to do attach uh, the material to um, our interfacing. Um, what I like to do is uh, I'm going to cut around the um, actual box that we do have. Um, that way, when we put it together, we're going to fold the material in so you don't actually see the material. And then we're going to make a sandwich. So all I'm going to do now is I've already heat bonded like uh, my, um, my interfacing. I'm just going to pull my heat bond off and all the adhesive stays on there. Fancy. Mm -hmm. Some people just throw this on the floor. Yeah, go ahead. Oh. So, like I said, I'm going to heat bond this, but I'm going to cut around it and give it a little bit, almost, I would say maybe like um, a quarter of an inch to half an inch, because I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold these in and then I'm going to sandwich it together. That you, you'll never actually see the material. I'm going to go ahead and I heat bond it together and fuse it. Once again, you know, like we're always working with heat bonding on the show. I swear it's just like the miracle material for me. I mean, it helps me get through all my projects really fast. I find new techniques and new ways to heat bond anything, really. Do you use a lot what of heat What are you bond? using? Are you using heat and bond light or what's your favorite? Um, technically, I like to use the heavy on <gasps> the material. I use light. Yeah, you know, you it's might have to battle. It is a preference, you, might have you know. Have to have some sewing battles. <laughs> and like I said, you know, you're gonna find out, you know, what style and what kind of heat bond that you like and prefer. It's just, you know, it's all gonna come on to yeah. you with practice, you know. You know, I like to use the light if I'm using a lot of detail work, if I'm doing a lot of applique work. Mm -hmm. But you know, I find that the heavy really works well for me. As far as doing a lot of materials, it's on wool or you know, like um, broadcloth material or cottons and stuff. I've actually never made cuffs before. Well, this is cool because it's going to be your first time. Yeah, I actually, I just like make the sleeve and then I put a little piece of bias tape right here and, sew and it together. call it done. And call it done. Well, now today <laughs> we're going to get a little professional on this. So finally, I think we got it fused on there pretty good. I'm just going to cut around it really simple. And you don't have to make it perfect because no one's really ever going to see this. This is one of the tricks that I do. Okay. So now, if you see, it's all infused and it's perfectly, there's no, there's no bumps in it there's, and it feels pretty good. You know, this is the stiffness that we're going to look for when we make the cup. Um, from now, I'm actually going to heat bond this other side and add material on there before. Um, after that, I'm going to fold this over just like so. And so we'll have perfect edges on both sides. So let me get my heat bond. I think it is. It's right here. Exactly. This is the heat and bond. Uh -huh. Love it. So here. The miracle maker. I've actually seen outfits at powwows where people don't sew their heat and bond onto their uh -huh. material. I'm sorry. I've done that a couple <laughs> of times. I think we all have. It's usually if you really want to get a nice outfit and really fast time, you can just heat bond it. Yeah. It'll Duct work for it. it'll work for a couple of grand entries. A couple of grand entries. It'll last one contest. Yeah, one contest, but like a couple of grand entries for sure. Okay. Now I'm not really measuring this, I'm kind of just eyeballing it. And the cool part is you can just fold it and you kind of get your seam where you need to cut. So if, it's another little trick that I do. One of my methods of my madness. And I'm going to steal that trick. <laughs> I like always have to measure everything. My, my eyes are crooked or something. So there, I heat bonded it. I'm going to fuse all of it real quick. And we're going to go on from there. And like I said, you know, we're actually making both cuffs in one, like, because I've actually over measured. Uh, the cuff is so that we're working with is four inches, but I measure nine. So we've got a little, we've got one inch to actually play around with in here. So let this cool for one second, and now we're going to iron on the other material. Like I said, all we're going to do is just fold the material over, and then I'm going to lightly heat bond it, and then well, we're going to heat bond it again, and then we're done. So now we got the, the heat bond actually cool. I'm going to pull the, um, the paper off and the adhesive will be on there like usual. Like I said, this is a miracle material that you know I love working with. And Willow here works with it all the time too, so. There oh, the go. heat and bond? Yep. Of course. 
Now see here, this is a cool trick that I'm going to do. You're never going to see uh, the actual edges of the material on this when I make the cup. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this over perfectly and I'm going to lightly iron the outsides of it. So all I'm going to do is this and just fold it and iron. Fold it, fold it. And that's why like when I said when I cut it out, it doesn't really have to be perfect. You know, you don't have to make the, like, the uh, perfect flush for like a, a rectangle because no one's ever going to see this. And this is just kind of a cool trick that I thought of. How hot is your iron? For some reason, I, you know, like the iron at home that I use, uh, it's, I, I bought it just to do material work. And I, I let that thing run like as hot as it can get. And usually, I mean, that thing's been on for like uh, three days before, you know, I mean, I forgot <laughs> about it. And it's realistically, you know, it's the iron that I just don't really care. So if you really get into this kind of stuff, you know, it, it's, it's who are you to get an iron that, you know, just, you're just going to beat, beat the heck out of, I would say. So really, you know, it's a good iron, though. I actually invested on a good one, though. But realistically, I, I beat it up pretty good. I think everybody who makes outfits has to have like one a clothes iron and then one for their outfits. Yeah, like I said, you don't want to go to work with like, you know, like... Um, Heat and bond all over you. Yeah, or, or sequins. You know you like to wear the sequins at oh, work. Yeah. So I heard. So there, now we've got perfect edges all the way around. You know, our cuff looks pretty nice on one side. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to continue on this other side and do the exact same thing. Now, the cool trick that I like to do is um, you can see I've already got heat bond on here again. I'm going to use it again, and I'm going to heat bond the outsides again. And that way, when we fold this in, it'll be perfect. And then all Willow has to do is just sew it, and we're good to go. So, cool trick is this is just a scrap piece of heat bond that I just, just now found. <laughs> just lays around here at the shop, you know, so... I'm going to cut little strips. I don't need a lot, just a little tiny strip. And I'm going to heap on right there. All. Cut out another strip. I'll just sit here and watch. <laughs> I'll put you to work here in a minute. We'll see, we'll see. So I had a question for you earlier. Shoot. My question was, I wanted to know, have you ever taught anybody how to sew? Um, technically, kind of, sort of. I've had some people come in and I, I really wanted to make my own sweatshop, but it didn't seem to pan out, you know. Uh, you know so I kind of can say I kind of helped some people, but then again, it didn't really work. But, you know, like I said, you know, you're always going to have your own preference when you start sewing on your own, your own tricks or your trade and stuff. So. Well, you're somebody who really like likes to share your work. I'm the exact opposite of you. I've, I've actually had a few individuals come to me and say, will you show me how to sew? And I've said, yeah, here's the sewing machine. This is how you thread it. This is how you use the pedal. And I've actually, I mean like some of the people who I just showed how to use the machine now they make really nice outfits. See, you're an expert and you didn't even know it. Because I'm from Potato Land. Oh, Potato Land. Yeah. Okay, so what we did was I pulled all the adhesive off. So we have adhesive here on the material again. Cool part is now all we're going to do is we're going to take our other side of our cuff. Make sure you got the right side of the print. Looks like this is it. And all I'm going to do is just fold this again. And that way we get perfect cuffs. Ooh. Now, you don't, when you heat bond it, you don't want to heat bond it all the way to the edge because what you're going to do is you're going to fold it again. So you just want to get the mi middle of the part of the material first. So all I'm going to do, I'm going to take it off the material and just go ahead and make a perfect line. Are these like those French cuffs? I or? did go with the French cuff. I don't know. I Fancy. wanted to try it. I wanted to try it out, you know, just to see if I could do it. So now all I said, you know, like we're going to just fold this in. That way, you know, like we, if you see it with the heat bond, like the folds are perfect. You know, like uh, you're not really going to see like the inside of the material, like on the outside, the rough parts. So this final one, all you really do is just fold it in. And this takes a little bit of manipulation. You just kind of want to fold it and kind of match it up with this next, the other one. So kind of just fold it and kind of push it, kind of hold it right there. And when you can, you know, just go ahead and iron it down. 
I'm going to be real careful, you know, because it does tend to move sometimes. But I want to try to get them perfectly even with the fold. You know, folding, folding. Come on, get in there. All right. So sometimes you have to play around with it, you know, get your fold, you know, and sometimes you really got to press on the iron to get it in there, but I'll get it. But that way, you know, it looks professional, it looks, you know, perfect. It looks fabulous. Well, thank y'all. There you go. All I want you to do is just go around like the very edges and that's it. Okay. Do you just sew when it's hot still? Sometimes um, when you sew when it's hot still, it'll make your needle stick. That is true. Is this fun? Being able to just watch? Yeah, it is. It is? Am I doing it right? Yeah. Okay, just good. stay on the edge. Well, I didn't stay that close to the edge. I like to get right on it. Well, sorry! It's kind of close. See, look. Okay. Here is your sleeve, senor. Wakain. Why, thank you. So, Willow has completed our sleeve. Like I said, this looks like just a square, but the cool part is we've actually made both cuffs in one. It's a kind of a trick that I, I, I kind of came up with. So, like I said, uh, what we did, you know, we went nine inches, and the thing is, you know, our cuffs are going to be four. Granted, all we have to do is measure right down in the middle, four and a half by four and a half. And you don't worry about it, you know, like you can just do a slight little line, because what we can do is we can make this side the back side, so no one's actually going to see this. So I'm going to do a slight gentle line, just like so. Take my scissors, cut this right down the middle. And there, we have both cuffs. Now the cool part is how what we're actually going to do is we're going to cut the interfacing. Uh, I have, you know, like we said, we're going to go four inches um, for the cuff. Well, we're actually going to make um, this, uh, we're going to cut inside the interfacing. Um, I have a half an inch to work with. So all I've got to do is barely, we're going to have to pull this material apart from the heat bond. And we're going to cut the interfacing. That way, when you do the cuff, you're going to fold the material inwards and make another sandwich. And then that way, no one's ever going to see uh, the, your material marks. Okay, now we've got the, the two pieces separated. And like I said, you know, what we're going to do is we're going to cut the, interfaces, uh, the interface on the inside. Um, that way, what we're going to do is we're going to fold the material over again. And when we connect the sleeve to it, it'll actually sandwich itself in. And you're never going to see the outside of the material. So what I did is, you know, working with four inches, you know, I gave myself a little bit of leeway with the interface facing. So all I got to do now is just cut. I want to go to the very end of the material. I'm not trying to cut the material itself, but I'm just going to go in here and just kind of cut out my interfacing. You be very careful, you know, you want to cut your material because, you know, once you do that, you just kind of have to start all over. So I'm going to go through and cut a straight line. Or you can just leave it and not start all over. <laughs> or we can just do bias <laughs> tape around the edges and call it done. Yeah. But for the show, we're going to do a little something fancy. Well, now I want to get fancy. I'm actually like learning how to do these. That's cool. I have a son that's about to be 15, so I know he's going to expect me to make him some man shirts. OK. Pull this out again. Now the cool part, 
And what you know, what me and Willow were talking about is this is a trick to working with heat bond. And if you do mess up with heat bond, one of the cool parts is if you use the iron again to get it hot again, you can actually release the adhesive so you can work with the material again. That's kind of what I did here. I when I did iron it, I ironed it really hard, and so the the adhesive is on the material really well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have to heat bond, like kind of heat this up so I can pull the material away. But what I'm gonna do from there is I'm just gonna take the material, fold it in on both sides, and then attach the sleeve, and it's perfect after that. So, kind of over, overwatch that for a minute. But see, if you heat bond it, I mean, kind of heat it up again, the adhesive will pull off again, and then perfectly you'll be able to pull the material up. From there, all we're gonna do is we're gonna just fold this material inwards over the, the interfacing. And that way, on both sides, you'll get a perfect sandwich. And when you actually attach the cuff, all you gotta do is one stitch over and your cuff is totally finished. So I'm gonna finish this up real quick, kind of get it all prepped up just to say if I was about to sew it. I'm just gonna fold this over and heat bond it again. It's starting to kind of get a little loopy, so I'm gonna get real hot this time. So with all your cuffs, you just you don't do any cuffs like this on your jingle dresses? No. Aww. I know. I have to start. But now, after But now I will. Exactly. Now I'll be the cuff monster. <laughs> I'll like have just cuffs? great big cuffs everywhere. Are you gonna do French cuffs? Yes, I'll do French cuffs. I know. Just kidding. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Do you do these on your outfits? Uh, absolutely not. Um, me, being a fancy dancer, you know, I actually have beadwork and I have put cuffs. <laughs> so I cheat. Uh, my, my dance shirts, I just realistically, I don't need a heat bond. I just end it and I just fold it over and sew it. Um, no one really sees it too well, so I just kind of keep it a kind of a secret of mine. So, Well, I think like these type of cuffs are more for like maybe Tradition you go to an NEC meeting or um, you're an MC and you want a really cool ribbon shirt. But most men's dancers actually have cuffs. True, true like that. Like beaded cuffs. <clears throat> you know. Karate cuffs. So now we come to the part where we're going to attach the cuff to the sleeve. Um, if you see, all I did was just fold the material over again. And from this other side, what I'm going to do is fold the material over again, making that perfect seam. Um, from there, all you got to do is just take the material from your sleeve when you do it and just uh, kind of sandwich it in. You don't have to, you know, round it off or, you know, actually uh, do the, um, the, the sleeve itself. You can just cut it, leave the material as is, and then sandwich it in and then um, stitch all the way around and you'll have a perfect sleeve. Um, over here we have Willow, my, my model over here. Uh, she actually has a finished product on how I did like the, the French cuff sleeves. Uh, you know, it sandwiched in pretty good. And like I said, you know, like from the material here, I kind of gapped it in, you know, because I like to have kind of a uh, baggy arm to make it a little bit comfortable for a red sky. Uh, but we go in and all of a sudden, you know, I sandwiched it in on the cuff. That way, you know, it, it fits perfectly, you know, it breathes perfectly. Got a nice looking cuff and, you know, later on he might want to do like some buttons or, you know, maybe put some rhinestones on it. I don't really know. And something to that effect. <laughs> but in the same sense, I also did the collar the same way. So, but that is actually how I did my shirts. And going on from that, I believe Willow's going to start doing this to all her jingle dresses from here on out. And I think she's going to do a little bit more detail work, as she says. And um, hopefully this se uh, season, you know, we'll see her out with different cups and stuff. We'll be right back with Willow, but at the time I'm going to introduce you to our new friend and our new co-host for the show, uh, straight from Bernina of Oklahoma City, our brand new machine, our Bernina 550. Uh, it's a, you know, 550, kind of a very advanced model. Actually, this is more advanced than the one I have at home, but some of the aspects of it still apply to some of the machines out there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to actually load the machine and actually do the bobbing. Now, the reason why we actually have to wind the bobbing is that actually the, you'll actually have two different strings, one from the uh, top, one from the bottom, and uh, the machine actually utilizes both these strings to interlock the stitch in between. If you see, I've kind of already started, I've taken my thread, I've gone through the little latch right here, I'm uh, going around this little elbow here, and what I'll do is I'll bring the thread right back here, put my bobbin right here, and this is where we're going to load it. 
Now most machines aren't this advanced. This one's a little bit more uh, more tricky to this one. Uh, most machines you actually put it right here, slide this little uh, this uh, little pin right over here, and use your pedal to actually wind your bobbin. This one is more advanced, where all I got to do is hit this button and it binds itself. Now to load this mechanical bobbing, there's kind of a certain way to do it. Um, I've got the like the thread wrapped around like so, like this way, and where the end will come out this way. So the best way to do it is I'll flip this around, take this bobbing, I'll insert it certainly just like this, and I'll pull it through, pull it through the bobbing till it gets to the top. Now you see how the wheel spins this way. That's perfectly how you want it, and all you got to do is flip it back around and insert it right into the, um, the mechanical part of the bobbing, and then you're good to go. Now to load the needle, all we're going to do is just follow the directional uh, arrows, going from the little tab here, going from here, load all the way down here, go around here, come up through the arm, come through here, go through these little tabs, and this one actually has a self-loading uh, needle. So you just put the thread here, it'll pull it right through the needle all by itself, and then you're done. So now we've come to the end of the show, sad to say, but I want to really thank the, our, our, our guest here that came all the way down from the great state of Idaho. Um, do you know, come on here, make a regalia, help me sew, you know, help me do my, some of my designs and stuff like that. So thank you, Willow, for coming down. Uh, hopefully, you know, I'll see you again sometime, you know, coming down and maybe do another episode. Maybe. We'll think about it. Yeah. So. But, you know, I want to see the buffalo. I've actually never been to Concho, so I got to go to um, the CNA Casino, gamble my life away. But I would like you guys all to come up to the Fort Hall Res, oh. where we rock. We got the I, mountains. I believe you're having a powwow coming up soon, right? Yeah. Our powwow is the second weekend of August. Um, it's really big. I'd say it's like the must go to powwow of the year. Our tribal queen is actually Miss Indian World now, so we're really proud of her. Um, and it's just gonna be fun. We have an all Indian rodeo, we have a softball tournament, we have um, a golf tournament, everything, hand cool. game. Well, hear that, Powell people? You might as well come check out like uh, Willow over here at was Shoshone Days, or what is it? Uh Shoshone Bannock Tribes Fort Hall Festival. Oh, okay, okay. So, people, um, once again, I want to thank everyone for tuning in. Uh, hopefully, we're going to bring some more episodes to you guys. Um, so, thanks very much. I hope.